So your question to me is really how can SaaS solutions help organizations with this economic doubt? I think one of the real issues is people are becoming more depressed by listening to the news every day about declines and layoffs and what's really needed is a reversal in thinking about what are we going to do when we basically emerge out of this cycle. It is a cycle uh, in my mind. I'm, I'm old enough to look back and that everything is a sine wave. You go from growth to prosperity to decline. This one is just a bit deeper and a bit longer, but I think the companies and organizations that are thinking ahead of how will they emerge to be stronger will be in a better position. Um, SAS provides diagnostic solutions as well as managerial solutions like strategy maps, like scorecards and dashboards that provide intelligence and guidance to employees, ability to basically mine data, make better decisions, identify which types of customers to grow, retain, acquire, win back, how much to spend, linking it to budget, linking strategy budgets. So all of these things are basically very different than uh, transactional software, which is for the day-to-day -day business. So, you know, performance management will help in the emergence. I think at this moment, many executives are basically in panic mode, crisis mode, and kind of survival mode. And you know, my recommendation would be to start actually thinking more positively. It's more fun to think more positively about where we're going to emerge and how we're going to emerge as stronger. Um, I think an influencing factor to this is really the strength of the leadership of an organization. And there is a difference between leadership and management. I, I personally believe that many organizations are, are, are underled and overmanaged. And what do I mean by that? I think management is about coping with complexity. That's why managers use spreadsheets and budgets uh, to make decisions to handle all that complexity. But leadership is different. Leadership is about vision and inspiration. And uh, the vision is really their primary job. They have to answer the question, where do we want to go? And that's where using methodologies like strategy maps uh, that are dynamic, incidentally, the strategy will never be static with all of the changes going on. Communicate that to employees, measurements, involvement of the employees, in selecting measures. Um, but uh, the problem is many of the executives are reluctant to basically communicate that strategy. And then when it also comes to inspiration, they're a little hesitant to really motivate employees in how to basically get on board. Now in contrast, the manager's role is to execute the strategy, monitor and improve all of those business processes. And so the performance management and the various solutions that SAS provides is all about this integration. Um, an additional point is uh, there is this shift from historical reacting to after the fact information to much more of an anticipatory planning with predictive analytics, forecasting to know how the future is coming at you and then making adjustments in advance uh, for problems and also just, just better forecasting of uncertainty and risk so that there can be a better, if you will, path towards um, what the uh, managers are, or the executives you know, are leading towards. In countries such as Romania and the Eastern European countries, I think, although it seems painful right now, uh, the, the decline of the economy is uh, hitting them hard and the European Union is you know, debating different policies, I think um, they could be more agility in younger companies and emerging companies uh, such as in Romania. So, you know, my encouragement to Romanians and even the neighboring countries, Czech Republic, uh, Poland, I'm from Chicago, so I'm somewhat comfortable from uh, these, in these countries, um, is to think positively and to think how do we emerge from this. And also perhaps there needs to be some sacrifice by the investors and owners. You don't want to lay off so many employees that you went too far. You want to have some retention of the knowledge and skills in existing employees so that they are with you when we basically begin the emergence. So it's a more, I think, about not being depressed about it and starting to just think positively.
I think the digital electronic age hastened the decline because just uh, you know financial transactions go around the world so instantly. I was told 99% of financial transactions have nothing to do with an actual good being traded, but it's just trading. Also, financial markets are 24/7. Now, so New York, London, Asia Pacific, Singapore, Hong Kong, it's just going all the time. So it's a more fragile, nervous economy in a sense. But foundationally, at some level, it's still fundamental economics. And like I said, for the last hundreds of years, there's always been these prosperity growth, the bubble breaks, whether it's tulips in Holland and the you know, 1900s to, you know, mortgages and subprime mortgages, which is what happened here. The assets got overvalued. And so we're basically on this roller coaster, but it will go back up. It always has for hundreds of years. I just think that 20 years from now, people will have said, oh, it happened, but they'll be on with their lives and things will be good. The sun will rise and babies will cry.